Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're bringing you a first look at Tier 7 Italian battleship Francesco Caracciolo. I think I got that right. Caracciolo? Caracciolo. I'm going to go with that, and, and I'm sure somebody later will tell me I got it wrong. Tier 7, in my mind, is a really odd tier for battleship, right? Because you find everything from the big 7 and those 16-inch rifles down to Scharnhorst, little 11-inch pop guns, and in the middle of all that mess, you have something like KG-5's uh, big broadside of 14-inch shells, right? Or, or even a California, throwing even more 14-inch shells. Into that mix, Wargaming and the Regia Marina introduce this ship, Francesco Caracciolo. So um, let's have a look and see what we're, what we're dealing with here. Survivability-wise... Similar to Andrea Doria at Tier 6, Caracciolo's health pool is not large, a mere 54,500 hit points. Now, this is not worst in tier. The two French Tier 7 offerings, both Lyon and Char uh, sorry, Strasbourg, have less health, but it's not much less health, right? We're talking about a couple thousand. She's, she avoids being uh, the dead last by like 2,000 HP, okay? So you're definitely on the low end here. Um, one place Caracciolo absolutely excels is Torpedo Protection. Look at that, 42%. This is... Best in tier, like not even close by a noteworthy margin, right? Colorado is second at 37%, and it's all downhill for there. They're like tier eight and tier nine battleships that don't have this kind of torpedo protection. So, I mean, if you find yourself playing this ship in a destroyer heavy game, man, take advantage of it. I mean, don't, you can't be suicidal, but be safe in the knowledge that this is almost like Massachusetts level torpedo protection. It's like a Moggy, like that's how good it is. Now, if you watched the previous uh, video on Andrea Doria, this armor scheme is going to seem somewhat familiar, right? Caraccio moves up to a 300 millimeter belt here, uh, comparable to many of the other contemporaries in her tier, like uh, Hood or Leon, Nagato, and Sign Up, all have belts in about this, this range. Unlike Doria, though, there's none of the shenanigans with any kind of tapered belt, right? You see, check this thing out. Right? This, is, this is a solid 300 mils from, what, probably several feet above the waterline to several feet below all the way from turret A, all the way back to turret Y. Like, this is just, bam, 300 millimeters, and we are done here, okay? She does have this 100, this 150 millimeter strake all the way to the bow um, and back again uh, down the other side. The Russians would have called this an icebreaker bow, but I don't seriously believe the Italians were ever concerned about this ship seeing ice packs in her various tours of duty. Her remaining extremities, 26 millimeters on the deck, just like Doria, 30 millimeters uh, across the central deck here, this is actually less than Doria, so she is a little more, I say, penable uh, for certain HE shells in this tier bracket. One thing I definitely want to point out, though, um, check out this 220 millimeter casemate belt, right? I mean, you go from 300 to 220 to 150 through here. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is going to bounce. This is like, they're like heavy cruisers. I'm used to being able to take like AP and full pen battleships through the casemate here of amidships. You really can't do that with this ship. Like this is gonna, it's gonna bounce a lot of things off of these, off of these plates. Okay. Um, she does have. Let me get in here and show you this. Just like Doria, she does have that little bit of turtle back and that bizarrely narrow citadel. Look how much space is in there. Let me turn on the torpedo ball just so you can see it. Look how much, look how much a gap there is in there. Right. Like there's, it's huge. I, <laughs> I, I have. No idea how the Reggie Marina ship designers managed to cram 1930s machinery into these little tiny narrow citadel spaces, but uh, apparently they found a way. So, so here we are. <laughs> but I mean, when you consider her armor scheme, the the narrowness of her citadel, um, everything, there's there's a valid case to be made that this ship might actually be one of the best armored battleships in Tier Seven, just as the whole package. At least certainly when fighting other other AP armed ships at long ranges. Maneuverability and concealment. Crotchulo uh, improves on Doria's top speed by a couple of points, moves up to 29 knots here. This puts her squarely in the middle of the pack at tier 7, but is a noteworthy advantage for a ship that's going to commonly see higher tier opponents that are much faster, like, say, an Iowa. Um, rudder shift and turning circle, you see there, 740 meters, 14.3 seconds. Very average for the tier, nothing special here. Um, just based on the numbers and kind of guesswork remember i haven't played this ship it feels like it looks like she'll handle kind of similar to either of the tier 7 french battleships which is not a bad place to be in my opinion like uh, i haven't driven a strasbourg but i have driven a dunkirk it's pretty it's pretty same dunkirk's she she, she she responds to the rudder that ship handles pretty well so i think you know kind of keeping with the theme of the italian cruisers and the italian battleships we've seen so far in the game i feel like caracciolo is going to handle decently 
Concealment wise, Doria's surface detection down at tier six was best in tier. Caracciolo here at tier seven is nearly so. She loses out to both California, Poltava, and Florida in this category. But remember, but you have to consider those ships all have 14 inch guns. Uh, every ship with better detection than Caracciolo, of course, has smaller guns, and then a few, a few that even have worse detection, still have smaller rifles. So let's talk about that main battery while we're at it. Here we go. Caracciolo mounts eight 381 millimeter 50 caliber barrels. You see them here in a four by two configuration. These are the exact same guns found on every Italian battleship from here all the way to the top of the tech branch. This 301 millimeter 50 caliber OTO 1934 barrel. This is it. This is what's on everything. Okay. So, like, if you go look at your Roma, if you own a Roma, that's, this is that gun. If you go look at uh, uh, Cristoforo Colombo, this is the same gun. It's the same gun, okay? Um, so, you, if, you've, if you've owned a Roma, you've played a Roma, you've got a pretty good idea of what you're getting into in terms of shell velocities and uh, ballistics and all the rest of that kinds of things. Honestly, you know, when you play a Roma, those guns are comfortable to fire. So, I'm looking forward to trying this out. Um, just keep in mind, right, okay, the... All of these, you know, from here to the top of the line, these are the same guns. Literally. All you're doing is changing the number of them and the configuration of them. So if you're grinding the line or really enjoy playing these ships, get comfortable here at Tier 7. Get comfortable playing Caracciolo. Um, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be firing these guns for a long time. Conversely, if you play this ship and you find you just despise this main battery, you can't stand these guns, it ain't going to get any better. You might ought to just kind of give up and cut your losses. Okay. Um, as with all the Italian battleships you see there, she comes armed with semi-armor piercing rounds in lieu of high explosive rounds. For the Italian 381 millimeter guns here, that means these shells have an alpha damage of over 14,000 points. Now that sounds crazy, but remember that SAP most commonly deals full penetration damage, which means that she, each one of these shells will do one third of that, which is around 4,600 damage if you can manage to get them to full pen, full pen the opponent and not ricochet or bounce at some funky angle. Um, one thing I didn't talk about in Dory's video, and I, I kind of missed this, is firing angles on the main battery. As you kind of look down Caracciolo's hull here, and you see like she has, she doesn't have a lot of superstructure in the way. You've got this this is angled pretty well to she be able to get these turrets around. And when you go look in Game Models 3D, you find that yes, she has pretty good firing angles here. You can get all of these guns in action 30 degrees off the bow, off off either bow, I side of the bow, or off either side of the stern. So you can kind of tweak your rudder. You know, get a full salvo off, then tweak your rudder back the other way, give the enemy maybe a 25, 22, 20 degree angle, and start generating those auto bounces that are going to keep you in the game a little longer, which is something that you need to be paying attention to when you have this little health. Um, secondary, Kanachia Lowe has four triple turrets of 152 millimeter guns with a range of four kilometers. Like Doria down at tier six, these might be decently potent, if you can get them into full sec into range, unfortunately, and a you know full secondary build is really not worth it with only four kilometers of range to work with. Of course, she also has these dual purpose 90 millimeter guns. She's got about what about, it looks like about six of these running down each side of the ship or so. Um, again, with the four kilometer range, I mean, again, you know, if you get to where you're brawling in this ship, uh, maybe they'll be decent. You might get some use out of them, but the range is just terrible. So it's it's a bone. It's not something you should really try to play for. Anti aircraft defenses now. On paper, when you start looking at the numbers, the number of flak bursts, the flak damage, and so on, Caracciolo's A8 looks okay. She's pretty squarely in the middle of the pack with this overall DPS number, this overall continuous damage. Unfortunately, she's gimped by her artificially, sh uh, artificially shortened long-range anti-aircraft ore. You see they're capping out at 4.6 kilometers. This is the national flavor of Italy, kids. This is... Wargaming's way of saying, screw the Reggae Marina, apparently. Everybody gets 4.6 kilometer AA max, and that's what you get. Um, also, something you got to consider, this is a tier 7 ship. She will regularly see, a T, or T, sorry, see tier 8 carriers like Enterprise and Shokaku and August von Parseval. Um, my advice, if you find yourself in a game with a tier 8 carrier, is go find some buddies. This A suite will do some meaningful damage against tier 6 carrier wings, um, but tier 8 carriers are going to look at Karachiolo the same way a Velociraptor uh, finds itself looking at a human, like a nice, tasty snack. And you don't have the health in this ship to absorb a lot of carrier attacks. So keep that in mind when you find yourself up-tiered with a carrier in the game. Consumables. Um, not a lot to talk about here. Just like Doria, we get DCP, we get standard heal. 
basically it. That's that's it. That's all she wrote. There's no spotter plane. There's no aircraft facilities. There is no none of the fancy crawling smoke. Again, that doesn't start until Tier 8's Venetio. Uh, we're not there yet. So, yep, that's uh, what you see is what you get. That's uh, that's about it. Um, So, we're kind of summing things up here. I feel like this ship has a lot going for her, right? The main battery married to this kind of stealth and this matchmaking bracket is going to make her incredibly potent against opposing cruisers in the hands of a patient battleship captain who plays back just far enough to let his team scout out targets that he can then pick on and turn into Swiss cheese. Against opposing battleships, hmm, she may struggle a bit, right? This SAP, I'll go back and show it again, has only 96 millimeters of penetration. That's not always going to penetrate the casemate of the battleships and her matchmaking bracket. And her AP has the same performance as Roma. That means that her AP shells are going to overpen a lot of the time when firing at broadside targets, even broadside battleships. Hmm. The interesting thing about playing this ship, and I suspect this is really going to be true of all remaining ships in the branch, is that your opponents will have to constantly be guessing at what kind of ammo type you have loaded. If you constantly load nothing but SAP, a lot of battleships might rightly disrespect these guns and just ignore you because your SAP is only going to kind of tickle them a little bit, right? If you lean on the AP too heavily, enemy cruisers can kind of ignore you a little bit, um, knowing that you'll basically just probably overpen the bejesus out of them a lot. So I think finding the balance of what ammo to load for, for which salvo, for each salvo you fire and which target you pick on with that ammo is going to be really more critical in this branch than the Italian heavy cruisers because of, all, of, because of the reload, right? We're seeing 28 second reload here. It goes up to, I think, 32, 30 or 32 seconds at tier 8. It goes up to even higher than that the more guns you add all the way up to Cristoforo Colombo at tier 10. Um, the potential rewards for proper that timing make it interesting, but it's going to be a constant challenge of these ships. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy that. Quick first look through the Tier 7 Italian battleship. Be safe, wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.